All right, the first question is, what is wellness? <laughs> it's a big one. And it's, and it's, it's a, a question that seems not to be answered very well by our huge medical system that's, you know, great at sewing back on severed arms and, uh, you know, diagnosing 10,000 diseases. But, you know, when they did a study at Harvard uh, Medical School at their medical center, and they, they said, I wonder, you know, even how well we're diagnosing disease. We're treat we, we know what's on the chart and what we're treating for. So they did a study on autopsy, and they found that uh, of all the people, one out of three were actually being treated for a disease that they actually had, that they could, you know, confirm what was actually happening when they cut the body open, autopsy it. So that means two so out of three people. Most were, most people at yeah. the best hospitals are being treated for something that they don't have. Uh, with toxic drugs and invasive surgeries, so uh, it's no wonder that, you know, we, we spend whatever, $14,000 a year per person on, on medical care, and we're not the healthiest country in the world. The, the more we spend on toxic drugs and surgeries, that's actually impairing our health. Right. Uh, so, so to me, it's, a, it's such an important question to ask, not just, you know, what disease do I have? What, you know, am I healthy or do I have a disease? No, no, no. There's, the, the, there's a spectrum. You know, there's a, a point where we have disease and, you know, whether it's diagnosed right or wrong, we're in that disease care mode, trying to, trying to manage the symptoms of disease is how it's usually described in medicine. Uh, but there's something that's completely separate from the question of disease or not disease, and that's wellness. And we all know intuitively that that exists because there's times in our lives, hopefully, where we've felt really well and where our, our body and our mind and our spirit guides us in the right direction to maintain that wellness. When we're well, we feel even better when we do the right things, when we exercise, when we eat right. Mm -hmm. When we're not well, when we eat the wrong things, we feel better. If a person is right. addicted to sugar or to, you know, whatever particular food that's throwing them out of balance, they start detoxifying when they when they fast, when they avoid that toxic food, which feels bad. Food, that feels bad. As soon as they eat it again, now they go in back into storage mode and, and stop detoxifying and they feel better. So it's a cycle of, of addiction that happens not only with drugs, but with, with foods and with, with activities as well. Yeah. They can be addicted to stress that activates their adrenals. And so they, as long as the adrenals still have energy, they still stay addicted to pumping that adrenal juice out there to get yeah. a little bit of energy. But we, we say it's like, it's like, like buying, it's like, you know, retail therapy, buying stuff on a credit card feels good, but then the bill comes and you got to pay the interest right. too. So we, what we want to do is re is rebuild wellness, which means we have to understand what wellness is. Wellness is that state where the body's working great and it can maintain itself and it guides us in the right directions. We're not making bad choices because they feel better in the moment, but keep us in the hole in the long run. Nice. So just to recap, it, it sounds like wellness is has more to do with when we start enjoying the things that are good for us, that's a good sign that we're in a well state. And when we're focused on trying to enjoy things that aren't good for us, and those are the things that are keeping us going, that's a pretty clear sign that you're that maybe we're not doing very well. We're not yeah, in that wellness. Yeah. And, and that's when we need some deeper guidance. It's, it can't just go on our, our, our likes and our intuitions and, oh, I feel better when I take an aspirin. Studies with aspirin show that people who take an aspirin for a headache, for sure it reduces the headache when they take the aspirin. That's why they do it. And it's great for aspirin sales. What's really great for aspirin sales is the fact that the studies show that when you do that, you are going to have more headaches in the future. It's going to be more aspirin sales. It didn't make you well. Your body was doing something that didn't feel good. So what are symptoms? Symptoms are the body trying to heal itself, and they don't feel good. It's doing work. It's like, oh, this feels bad. I want to stop <laughs> healing. <Right. laughs> yeah. So we have to reframe what that means. It doesn't mean we can't do something to help us ourselves feel better, but we have to distinguish between 
what's suppressing the healing to make us feel better and what's helping complete the healing in a positive way, like helping with detoxification when we have that headache, that would be a positive thing uh, okay. versus, you know, antihistamines, antibiotics, anti, you know, pain anti, anti-healing. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like the, it. the drugs that kill pain and those who suffer from it. Right. And there's been drugs they had to take off the market because just pe- too many people died of heart attacks and things when they're killing yeah. the pain. The pain is a messenger. So we don't want to listen to the messages of our body and, and understand them at a deeper level. What is it? What is the that headache is usually it's like body's up to here with something. It's and it's having to try to break it down, burn it, detoxify it, eliminate it. You know, if we have uh, a histamine reaction, body's, you know, stuff coming out uh, here, that's the overflow, the release valve. The real problem often is in the kidneys at the other end of the body. And so we're backed up to here. We need to help the kidneys. What helps that? Helping improve uh, digestion, getting microbiome into the gut. We're supposed to have thousands of species in our microbiome in the gut. And every time we eat commercial meat, it's loaded with antibiotics. It's killing off the, those bacteria that we need to, to maintain mm-hmm. a, a clean, healthy gut. The most toxic part of the body is what's in our gut. You can have a, a little diverticulum the size of a pea that has a deadly amount of toxicity in it if it was absorbed all at once. So if that little pouch breaks and it goes into the bloodstream, that can be it. Mm-hmm. So uh, we want to do a lot of preventive maintenance to to get back to wellness and maintain that state of wellness and understand the, the clues, the road signs along the way when we fall from that state of grace. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I'm not feeling good. I'll feel better if I take an aspirin, an antihistamine, an NSAID, a steroid. Uh, those are all stopping the healing process, keeping it, digging our hole deeper. Yeah. Yes, so, we feel better in the moment. But why so, do doctors tell you with most prescriptions for chronic illness, they say, well, Get used to taking this. You know, if the side effects are too bad, let me know, and I'll put you on the next toxin on the list. Yeah. But none of them are good for us. So <laughs> but there sounds, are things that are good for us. So, nature. We're nature so, deficient. We've removed ourselves from nature. We need to bring the key elements of nature, whether those are yeah. material substances from plants or from our, you know diet, uh, botanical medicine, uh, or, or whether it's pure energy, like quantum energetics uh, we can do with energy medicine uh, or information through through the mind and the spirit uh, information and, and, and meaning in life is also very healing.